Like any mechanical device, your heart's valves can wear out and become clogged. Fortunately, those valves can be repaired or replaced in many cases, often leading to a patient's full recovery. Dr. Pravin Shah of Hogue Memorial Hospital Presbyterian in Newport Beach discusses the problems associated with valve disease and the procedures used to correct it. The heart has four valves, two on the right side, two on the left side. And these valves are um, one-way valves, meaning they allow blood flow to go in one direction and prevent the flow from backing up, from going back in the same direction. When the valves are diseased, any of these four can be diseased. When that happens, they may have leakage or they may get narrow, and so it builds up pressure. Pumping chamber, it becomes weak. Then there's a backflow of blood and there's congestion in the lungs. People can't breathe, uh, particularly when they're exerting initially. Subsequently, they can't breathe when they are, when they are uh, at rest or just minimum exertion. So shortness of breath is a, is a symptom. Others are irregular heartbeat causes palpitations. Um, sometimes angina-like chest pain occurs in some situations. Patients may get dizzy and may even pass out uh, in, in some of the valve conditions. We asked Dr. Shaw what causes the valves to fail. Well, the, the valve uh, disease is, is caused by multiple parameters. Some are inborn. Person is born with it, but it doesn't manifest itself till later in life because it doesn't progress enough to become evident and to produce symptoms. And so some are congenital, we call them congenital. The majority though are acquired, meaning they occur later in life. And of the acquired ones, uh, in the old days, rheumatic fever was a very common cause. Nowadays, rheumatic fever is less common. A lot of the patients with the mitral valve have what we call degenerative valve disease, where the valve de becomes floppy, degenerates, and it elongates the cords, and that results in leakage of the valve. Who is at risk for valve disease? I would say almost anybody is at risk. There is no underlying factor which says this person is not likely to get valve disease. Aging is one parameter that produces risk. With aging, there is a calcium deposition that occurs on the valve, particularly the aortic valve. The more calcium deposits, the more abnormal the valve becomes in terms of its ability to open and close effectively. So with the result, um, cal aging is one of the factors. The other is, as I mentioned, family history. Some members of the family may have degenerative valve disease. It's more common than in those family members to get degenerative valve disease. And it may establish, it may become evident when they are 30, 40, 50 years old and not be present when they were children. Nowadays, we recommend surgery at an appropriate time so that majority of patients, I would say 99%, after successful valve surgery have considerable improvement in the stamina, in their ability to exercise, walk, uh, do all the things that they would like to do, irrespective of age. And we have patients who uh, claim they have no symptoms, but after the valve has been fixed, uh, they come back six months or a year later and then say, I didn't realize that I was slowing down as a result of the valve problem, which I'm now able to do a lot of things I couldn't do before.